Well, hello, hello. Welcome to Wellness by Design. Today, I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. Today, we're talking about hormones and your skin and how to uh, grow older gracefully, naturally, and looking our best. And I'm so excited to have Dr. Trevor Cates as our guest today. Welcome, Dr. Cates. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. I'm really thrilled to have you here. I know you've been doing this for a long time, um, not to age you or anything, but you were the first uh, female naturopathic doctor in California, right? Yeah, licensed as a naturopathic doctor. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> and um, so you you focused on women's health, and I know skin issues has, has been your background. It's kind of what led you to do what you did. Um, and you've written a book. Um You've written a book called, um, let me see, Clean Skin from Within, <laughs> and you've got a new book coming out tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natural Beauty Reset is coming out tomorrow. Yeah, Clean Skin from Within came out about um, five years ago, and so it's great to have another book now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure like some things change, like the beauty from within, I'm sure doesn't change, but we've got different technologies and things like that available and different products and we know a little bit more now. So um, I really appreciate that you've been doing this all these years and um, that you, uh, you've you got this focus. So we've really got the best person here to be talking about um, aging beautifully. So let's let's begin with your, you know, your skin um, and, and beauty begins from within. Like, how does that, how do you see that working for people? Yeah, well, it was, um, I've been a naturopathic phys physician for 22 years, and it was really about 10 years ago that I started focusing more on skin because I was working in the Waldorf Astoria Spa as the doctor in the spa, that's where my practice was, and I was doing in Park City, and I was doing a two-week weight loss program, and at the end of the two weeks, people would say, Dr. Cates, I... I lost weight. I feel great. But what surprises me is my skin. I didn't know my skin could look this good. And I, you know, I, I was like, well, of course, you know, skin is an outer reflection of our overall health. And I have my own history of uh, what I got, how I got into naturopathic medicine as, as a kid. I had a lot of health struggles. A lot of it showed up on my skin, a lot of allergies and hives and eczema and things. And so at a young age, my I thankfully found a holistic approach and my parents that my parents introduced me to. So I kind of knew from a really early age that, you know, skin, our skin can change if we address root issues from within. But at that moment, when I was, you know, doing this program, I thought, well, wow, a lot of people don't realize they haven't made that connection because they go in to see conventional dermatologists and they're given a topical steroid or maybe they're um, given Accutane for acne or, you know, and it's not really addressing the root cause. And, it, and what I experienced as a kid is so many side effects of medications. Mm -hmm allergic reactions, side effects, all of these things that are possible. When you really look to a holistic approach, not only can you help um, with, you know, your skin issues, but you can address root causes that help your health in so many other ways. So that's what led me to write my first book, Clean Skin from Within, and also to, to create the, the Spot Doctor's Natural Skin Care line. And, and then with this new book, I would, the biggest thing that I got asked about was about hormones, women asking me about hormones. Cause I, I touch on it and clean skin from within, but it is, it, it's women's hormones are, are pretty complex and they change throughout our lives, you know, from all the, through all the different transitions we go through puberty. And if we choose to get pregnant, you know, fertility, pregnancy, postpartum, perimenopause, menopause, and, you know, throughout our lives, throughout the month, throughout the day, our hormones change. And so I wanted to really help women understand the connection between their hormones and the changes with those and how to identify which of their hormones might be out of balance. And that's sex hormones, as well as adrenal, thyroid, 
even things like insulin, melatonin, there are a lot of different hormones that play a role in our health and that can show up on our skin as well as how we age. So I wanted to really help women understand that. And then, um, so that's what I do. And, and part one is I kind of lay that out. And then part two, I go into a seven day reset <clears throat> for each season. And so it's food, movement, mindset, and skincare recommendations and a seven day plan, which you, you know, it's, you, it, you want to do it every season because our needs change with the seasons. Oh my goodness. I love that you're addressing the root causes. And as you said, most people aren't aware that what's happening on their skin is really a reflection of what's going on inside. And so it's not just like put something on the skin and hope it's going to get better. Um, so I love that you're doing that. And I, this is really important, the, the hormonal connection. I think most of us realize, especially women, you know, our hormones fluctuate so much throughout the month and then throughout our lives. Uh, we knew as teenagers, you know, I'm getting those period, pre-period pimples coming up, but we're not really thinking about that as much when we're older and what's going on with our hormones and our skin. Um, so the seven day reset, that's really interesting. Um, you mentioned uh, four, I think it was four components of it. Mm -hmm. So how do they work to um, help reset hormones? Yeah. So food, movement, mindset, and skincare. So Food is really what provides us with the nutrients we need to help us with balancing our hormones. Um, and there are also certain foods that can help with like uh, metabolizing our hormones or like, like estrogen or like DIM that comes from cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, cauliflower, those types of vegetables are really important to help us with metabolizing hormones. And then there are certain nutrients we need to make hormones and um, healthy fats, for example, we need that actually to help us. We need cholesterol actually to help us with making our, our hormones. And um, of course, you know, cholesterol gets a bad rap, right? But there yeah. are some, you know, definitely want to get the good fats, the good types of um cholesterol. And, uh, so we also need, um, um, you know, to, to manage stress and get a good night's sleep and we need to move our bodies. We need all of those things to help with our hormonal balance. And then, uh, one of the biggest, um, things about skincare is that we are exposed to a group of chemicals called endocrine disrupting chemicals in personal care products. And these group of chemicals, endocrine disrupting chemicals are hormone disrupting chemicals. So when we get exposed to these chemicals, they will bind to hormone receptors. They can mimic hormones. So then the body actually thinks that it has a hormone or higher levels of hormones than it, than it does, or it can change the way that our hormones function because of it, um, the way it attaches to the hormone receptors. And so these chemicals have been linked to thyroid problems, infertility, early puberty, and difficulties with um, menopause, breast cancer, a lot of different thyroid, serious thyroid, I mean, um, hormonal imbalances and hormonal issues. And so we get exposed to these in our air, water, food, personal care products, and whatever we can do to reduce our overall exposure to these is going to be helpful. Mm. I think people aren't, the general public isn't really aware. I don't know why, because, you know, when you're in the natural space, like you are and I am, we hear about it, but the general public doesn't seem to understand that connection between like these toxins that are that are in our everyday products and the air and so on that we're using and how that's affecting our hormones. What is the, or can you even pick, like what's the biggest impact? What's affecting our hormones the most? You mean which chemicals? Yeah, what like what from our environment uh, that we're exposed to is is kind of, I guess the biggest thing that we could remove that would help or also having the biggest impact. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, with some of the things that we're exposed to, you want to think about things, what are you exposed to on a regular basis, um, or things that are particularly toxic. And so the things that are particularly toxic are heavy metals, because they don't get out of the body very easily. 
and then also a group of chemicals called Forever Chemicals PFAS. And so we want to be particularly careful of, of avoiding those. And then also the, the products that we're using on an everyday basis, things like fragrance, that so it's fragrances in personal care products, cleaning products, air fresheners, um, so many products, even feminine hygiene products. Uh, can, some of them have synthetic fragrance and you're, you know, these actually they're listed as one ingredient, but it's actually a whole group of chemicals that are in there. And there can be a number of different endocrine disrupting chemicals in within fragrance. One example is diethyl phthalate. Diethyl phthalate is a type of phthalate. Phthalates are known as plasticizing agents. And diethyl phthalate, DEP, is used in personal care products and fragrance to help the smell last longer, to, to kind of preserve the scent. But it is one of these endocrine disrupting chemicals. It is known to show up in human samples and urine samples. And so we do know that when people apply it to their bodies, it does get into circulation. Uh, I think a lot of people have heard about parabens and a, a lot of companies actually have taken parabens out of their products, but not because they felt like it was really doing, you know, like it was really an issue, but it was more of like the public demand for it. So, which is actually a good sign that, you know, when we push back on personal care products, uh, companies, or when we ask questions, that's when things start to change. People start asking questions about things like parabens and then also some of the sunscreen ingredients like oxybenzone. Yeah. And we know these also have a huge impact on the environment too. And feminization of fish and creating issues with marine habitats and this getting into our water supply, but it also has a human impact as well. And so, you know, and I think a lot of times as we get older, as women, we use more personal care products. We're using more skincare products because we, you know, we use the eye cream and the, you know, the neck cream and the, the night cream and the day cream and the sunscreen and you know, all the things and more makeup and um, without realizing we're exposing ourselves to more of these potential chemicals. But they don't have to be in there. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I created the Spot Doctor skincare line was because I wanted to make sure that I created a line that was truly natural, truly non-toxic, because there's not a lot of regulation around this industry. It's actually, I've learned more and more about the, what a shady industry this is, unfortunately. Yeah. It's very disturbing as a doctor and a skincare manufacturer learning all the things that um, the lack of regulation in this area and what companies can get away with. Um, I know my manufacturer oftentimes says she, cause she's, uh, she makes for different companies and she says, you know, not, not everybody, no my other people, my other clients don't ask me these questions. They don't ask for these, this testing. They don't ask for these things. You, you're definitely going above and beyond what is expected in the, in the personal care product industry. And, and that was, you know, partly why I created this product or line. Cause I, you know, I know that people can call their product products natural or hypoallergenic without any real meaning. It's just a marketing claim. It does not have any FDA regulation. And the FDA has only banned 11 ingredients in personal care products, whereas in Europe, they banned over a thousand ingredients. So initially I had my products made in Europe, in England, because I wanted to have them made to EU standards, which are higher than most yeah. places in the world. And so now we make the products in the US uh, because we found suppliers that we can trust and know are truly clean and natural. But um, yeah, it's been a really interesting journey learning all of this. And I think that so often women put products or people put products on their skin without realizing that it can get into the body. But if you remember, if you think about it, skin is actually an application, a root of medication that where medication will be administered. And that is like hormone creams, nicotine patches. They're applied to the skin because we know that it can actually, you know, these um, active ingredients can get through the skin and into circulation. Well, what you put on your skin can get into circulation as well. And you know, with the, the technology and, and changing, it, it, they're making products more absorbable so they get through 
the skin barrier a lot easier so that they, you know, can like plump up the skin and all these things. But that also is a route of administering all these toxic ingredients. And then a lot of people also have breaking down of their skin barrier function. So they develop something called leaky skin and mm -hmm. then their skin actually becomes more permeable and they may actually absorb more than somebody who has a more intact barrier function. Mm, interesting. So parallels between the leaky gut and leaky skin and, um, and of course, our gut health is related to our skin health as well. So pretty safe to say, I think, Dr. Cates, that like anything with the fragrance is kind of a good place to start. Like you don't want to be using that in terms of skincare products. Um, uh, and because we don't want to be disrupting our hormones because that is key to how our, our skin looks, right? I know you've got this docu-series coming up, starts tomorrow too, it's called Hormones, Health and Harmony. Um, and so let's hear a little bit about that because I know you've put a lot of effort and time into making sure that um, that you've put together quality uh, information for people so they can really get, get to the meat of this. Yeah. So when I, when I realized I needed to write this book, I started to, when I was diving into the research and I was talking to some of my colleagues and I, I realized that I have so, such a great network of, of colleagues that, that it's nice for people to hear from different perspectives rather than just me. And especially from people like gynecologists who have, um, you know, started off in more with a more of a conventional approach and realized that they, they were limited in what they could do to help women balance their hormones and overcome their health issues. And that went more to a functional medicine approach. So I decided to interview over 50 different experts and they're gynecologists, dermatologists, there are um, mental health professionals and fitness people, mindset people. There are a lot of different great experts in this series. And I I flew around the country interviewing these people in person. These are um, like highly uh, high quality at all film team crew with me and edited. And so each episode has a theme around it. So it's very engaging. It's very interesting because what you'll see is you'll see these parallels. They're like when you hear a lot of different experts saying, this is important, this particular like endocrine disrupting chemicals, you know, you need to avoid this. And it's not just me saying it, but you have a, a number of people saying it and they build upon each other, you know, like, and this is what I do with my patients. And this is what I discovered. And this is what I found personally with my own health. And, and so it's, it's really interesting to, um, I, I really loved interviewing all these experts, putting it together is very exciting. And so, yeah, it's going, it's live tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we have episode one. And when people go to the link, I know you have the link to share with people and people go to the yeah, link sure. to register, then uh, just make sure you register because you want the way you can access it is you'll click on that link and there's a way to put your name and email address. And then that way you'll get emailed a link to each episode when they go live. So episode one is tomorrow. It's up for 24 hours for free. Then episode one goes down, you'll get another email with episode two. And then we go through all of the episodes and, um, and so you'll be able to have a chance to access this all, all month long. And, um, and so, yeah, definitely, but go ahead and register and, and you can also go to that link to see the trailer and all the different people that are being interviewed for this docu-series. And I, I got to interview Suzanne Summers as well as a bunch of really, um, um, interesting colleagues and experts and it, it all came together really beautifully. And, and then also there's a, a way people can buy the docu-series if they don't get a chance to watch, um, or if they're, you know, listening to this after the, the time period when we've gone live for free, you can buy the docu-series. You have a lot of great bonus content, including the Suzanne Summers interview. And so it's, it's just, it's a really great, uh, resource for, for women to understand their hormones, to hear from different experts, different perspectives, and to share with other women in their life. Because I think 
it's really unfortunate how many women are uh, just bought into this misbelief that we just have to suffer through because we're women and like, you know, PMS, Oh, it's just part of being a woman and, you know, period problems and infertility is on the rise. So, you know, th and thyroid issues. And so I mean, women are just like, well, you know, you go see a doctor and they're just like, yeah, well, this is common and you're going to, this is just something that you're just going to have to suffer with. And, you know, women with thyroid issues saying, well, you're going to, you're going to live with this your entire life. So here's a medication and, um, you know, I'll see you next time. And, it, and it's like, there's just, there's so much more that we can do. And just because things are common, you know, and really challenging perimenopausal and, and menopausal transitions, um, just because they're common doesn't mean that you just have to suffer through. So right. this is one of the biggest things that you hear from all these experts, their personal struggles, what led them to help a lot of other women and to understand that you can be take back charge of your health, that there are solutions with lifestyle, with, um, you know, getting what to ask for, for lab work and what ranges to, to think about and look for and talk to your doctor about, because it's not like doctors don't want to help us. Uh, most of them are limited. A lot of conventional doctors are limited in the amount of time that they have to spend with patients. And so they might only have, you know, seven minutes to spend with you and they're trying to be fast and just give you a prescription. They don't have time to explain things, but the doctors in this, in the series, you know, I spent a lot of time interviewing them and there's all this content to really help you fill in the gaps. And with the first time we aired this in May, the, the feedback we got from women was, was just what we were hoping for, which is this really helped me connect the dots. It's a, helping me understand what I've been working on with my healthcare provider, what I've been trying to communicate with my doctor about. And I, I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew it wasn't just all in my head. And so really helping empower women, I think now more than just, I mean, you know, it's, it's not like you keep, we keep thinking, oh, this, it's going to get easier for us, but unfortunately we're still, we still not there yet when it comes to yeah. women's health. It hasn't been that long since women have actually been included in mandatory, um, being included in research that used to be just all men that were in research. And so, um, hello, we're a little different. We're not just like many men or, you know, <laughs> we are, we have very different, I mean, we have the same hormones, but we have very different levels and our bodies work very differently because, um, as we're designed, um, you know, we're designed to procreate, right? We're designed to, whether or not we choose to get pregnant and have children, our bodies are designed that way. So our hormones are just, they're different arts of which makes our bodies function different. Mm -hmm. I love what you said there too, about <clears throat> common versus normal. You know, we're, we're kind of like, oh, this is, this is, we're told it's normal, but really these are just common, but not normal. We shouldn't be having to go through a lot of these things. So what are some of your themes for each day? Just like give us an overall, uh, you know, 30,000 foot view. For the different stages of like of a woman's life? No, for your, uh, for the docu-series, the themes. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, we have so many. I mean, there, there's a lot of busting myths. Um, there's one on metabolism. There's one on sex drive. There's one called honoring your lady parts. Um, there's one about getting your glow on. Um, there's one on superpowers. There's, um, we, um, you know, mental health, um, emotional health, we cover all the different areas. And, and so what I wanted to do was design this for women of all ages and stages. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of women going through menopause, perimenopause tend to be really motivated because they, they realize it's connected to their hormones. But I wanted women to understand, you know, about their daughters, what they're going through with puberty and what uh, women may be struggling with fertility issues or, um, wanting to set themselves up for a healthy pregnancy and easy postpartum period, all of these stages that when we, when we get our hormones in a more harmonious place where, 
you know, balancing hormones is a, is a process, an ongoing process. It's not like one point we've arrived because life, you know, we'll get stressed, we'll difficulty sleep, we'll, you know, have a, something happen in our lives and that will kind of cause things to shift. But the more we can do to heart, set our, create a healthy foundation, the easier these transitions in life will be. So easier puberty, easier fertility, if that's what we choose to, easier postpartum, perimenopause, menopause. And I think a lot of times too, is, is there's this mindset piece of it too, of, Oh, you know, you know, women that dread menopause. Oh, you know, what is that? And I'm, I'm dreading that down the road. And there are a lot of women in the docu series that talk about what a powerful time in life it is, too. So, I think it's really important for women of all ages to see this because um, we, you know, we, we oftentimes are not just taking care of ourselves, too. We're oftentimes taking care of maybe our mothers, our daughters our sisters, we want to help them, our girlfriends, maybe they were also caregivers or practitioners that watch the series. And so it's really good to know all the different ways that we can support our health to harmonize hormones. Mm, and I, I just love this moving through all of the stages with ease and with grace should be, that's how it should be not right. difficult. So I love, love that you've done this, Dr. Cates. So this this program, the one wellness by design, is about intentional living, and and uh, I love coming up with simple steps, like action steps that someone could do today to um, to improve their health. And of course, you're talking about hormones, so perhaps your one thing that someone could do today might be related to that. What what would you say could be a simple step someone could take today? Yeah, well, I mean, I think if you know the, the really the first step to take is realizing that you're worth it. Because I think it's so hard to make any change if you don't realize you're worth it. I think a lot of times we beat ourselves up, we you know take ourselves down, we want to take care of other people before ourselves. But to realize that you're worth it, that you're valuable, that it, you know, to, to take care of yourself is not only self-honoring, but it's honoring the other people that you take care of. And as, as women, I think it's, it, that's like really the first step. And then, like I mentioned, the food movement, mindset, skincare, those are the, really the keys to help you, um, build that healthy foundation will help you through and be more resilient. And so finding what something that you can do in each of these areas, even if it's something simple, like starting your day with a healthy smoothie, with like lots of veggies in there. So you, you know, get your day started with lots of veggies, not, not, ton, you know, like gotta be careful with, you know, not too much like fruit juice or fruit, you know, want to make sure you're getting plenty of like um, is getting in some protein and healthy fats and all that, but get just starting your day healthy. And then maybe taking some time in the morning for a meditation or some breath work, even taking three deep cleansing breaths can, can be really, uh, powerful and helping us with managing our stress. Um, and then moving our bodies, figure out, can you get outside and just go for a quick walk? And then what can you do? What's one thing with your skincare? Maybe just taking a look to see what has synthetic fragrance in it is if you can swap something out that maybe has organic essential oils or that's fragrance free. So I know that's more than one thing, but it's, um, if there's just one thing, it's the first knowing that you're worth it. And you are, I'm not, you know, it's not a question. Are you worth it? But you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. I think uh, a, a lot of us tend to put everyone else ahead. Um, we're mother, a lot of us are mothers and we're put our children ahead. We put everyone else ahead. And so what we don't realize this, this was my experience too, that when I saw that I was putting everyone else ahead, well, then what happened with my health, then I couldn't help anyone. So uh, you have to put yourself first. It's, you know, that old put your mask on first, right? Before you, you put the mask on the other person. So I love that you said that. So sweet. So where is the best place that people can find you? I shared the link to your, um, to, to the docu-series right there. Where, where's the best place that people can find the spa doctor? 
Okay, great. So with the book, my my new book, Natural Beauty Reset, people can go to naturalbeautyreset.com and okay. we have a list of uh, places where you can order the book. And then when you, after you order the book, you can go back to that page and um, you can get $500 in free bonuses that complement the book, like workbooks and uh, we have um, a seven day masterclass starting soon and, you know, things that people can do to really engage and follow the, the programs. And so that's a place. And then everything else, you, pretty much everything you can find at the spa doctor.com. T H E S P A D R.com. Doctor is abbreviated. And you can find um, more about our the skincare products, our supplements, the books, all of that stuff um, at the Spot Doctor and about the the Woman's Doctor podcast and all the great things we're doing. We're also on social media on this at the Spot Doctor. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all of this. I know that there's a lot to cover, especially when we're talking about these four areas that people may be very surprised are related to skin and how we look. And um, so I really appreciate all that you shared, but obviously check out Dr. Kate's website, get, look at her book, go to the docu-series. There's so much more to find out. And we know that when we when we feel good on the outside, it helps us feel better on the inside as well. And the things that we can do to look better on the outside are really things that help us inside. So it's all beautifully connected. I so appreciate you being here today, Dr. Cates. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that you do as well. Oh, thanks. Um, and thank you to the audience as well for joining us live. Or if you are listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube later on or any of the other platforms, thank you for being here and communicate with us. Let us know. Do you have any questions? Maybe you can uh, contact Dr. Cates and ask questions or you can ask questions in the comments. We're happy to answer and connect with you and find out what's what do you want to know about hormones and your skin. So thanks so much for being here on Wellness by Design. And don't forget to share this with someone who needs to hear it. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.